Cool. Uh, our team, part of our team is in Ukraine right now uh, in uh, this, this, this church with Pastor Vladimir Montan or this more like a conference. It's like a, actually more of a, like a college for a whole month. People getting 12,000, 12,500, 13,000 people getting together every single day. Can you believe that? And they're just uh, learning from the Word of God, renewing their mindsets. Generational curses are being broken. People are getting healed. I just got a text with, uh, from him um, <clears throat> before the service. He says, bro, he's like, it's crazy here. He's like, people just, uh, people getting delivered on the hallways and the walkways. People are getting healed. People walking out of their crotches, uh, I mean, dropping their crotches, walking out of the wheelchairs. He said, the move of God is just incredible. And then, and they are right in the middle of all of it. And so, uh, we they didn't just go there to enjoy it we as a church we sent them on purpose we sent them so that they can learn at the feet of these men and uh, men and women of God so that they can receive the instruction receive the anointing and to come back here and to do here in U.S. in our city what God has called us to do amen <clears throat> amen and I'm actually going to talk a little bit about that but that's going to come a little bit later the importance of, of mentorship in our life, importance of following people that God has placed in this life, in this world, so that we can imitate, so we can, uh, so we can follow them as they follow Christ. Like the Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Amen. There are people that God places in our lives. There are people, the men of God and women of God. There are people that God raises up and places in this world so that we can follow them as they follow Christ. Amen. And then we, could ex we can expect the results that they, re that they have. If we faithfully follow and do what they say, we can expect the results that they have. Amen. And that's why we believe that we will see greater salvations. We will see greater miracles. The things that you hear now, you know, uh, it's great to hear, you know, somebody's ear open. It's great to hear somebody's knees, uh, knees are getting well. And, uh, you know, I, trust me, I, I had a new problem and I know how painful that is. And as maybe it's as small it might be or as big it might be for somebody. That's a problem that Jesus can heal. But time is coming when things like cancer, when things like HIV, when, when diabetes, when uh, arthritis and things like that, they will be leaving here on this place. They will leave people's lives and people will walk out free in Jesus name amen 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 as we follow God faithfully as we follow his men and women of God that he placed in this in this uh, day and age God is no respecter of person and he will honor us in our church amen 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 open up to Romans 10 while I try to work my iPad here <coughs> Okay, let's open to Romans 10, <clears throat> 17. And we will talk about faith. And we will talk about, of course, evangelism. This is one thing you can know for sure in this church. Is that every service you come, you always will hear about purpose. And our purpose is to win souls and make disciples. Every single service, every single time you will hear about one thing is about the vision. Amen. Because that's what Jesus came to die for. He died. And this is what he lived for and this is what we're going to live for and if we need to die. Amen. So let's open chapter 10 verse, um, uh, verse 17. But I am going to start reading from verse 13 so we kind of get a little context of what we're going to be talking about today. So verse 13. For, for, whoever calls of, uh, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him? In, uh, in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher and verse 15 and how shall they preach unless they are sent verse 17 so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God so we're going to start with verse 17 and we're going to sort of kind of work backwards up up to the verse 13 that we read okay so follow me verse 17 says this so the faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God what is faith we're going to talk about faith Bible describes faith in Hebrews says the faith is simply confidence in what we hope and what we hope for an assurance of what we do not see so faith is confidence for the things that we hope it's pretty much faith is that confident hope that you know 
that whatever you're facing you can overcome whatever if you're facing sickness that in his stripes I am healed that hope and confidence that God is there with you and he will heal you now faith is not in faith so we don't just have faith in um in some kind of something magical something mystical something we cannot describe something just kind of this mystical thoughts no faith is simple is not in faith but faith is in God faith declares that even though I'm sick God is still my healer even though I am poor he is my provider Bible says let the poor say I am rich let the sick say I'm healed let the weak say I'm strong that's what faith is and it's the that assurance in uh, in which you don't see for example this last part says faith so faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance in what we do not see you're sure of what you do not see but you can say well how can I be sure in the things that I don't see I need to see it so I can be sure of it so I'm 100% for example you know I see this phone and I know this phone for sure I mean you can't trick me you can't tell me that this is a I don't know potato I can see this is a phone and so this is a phone so how can I be sure of things that I do not see simply let's let's take something that we we're very common and we we're we know very well for example gravity everybody knows what gravity is right something that pulls you down you can't see gravity but you are surely confident when you're on a third floor to take the stairs instead of going off the window right so because why you have sure confidence that the gravity exists but I tell you well how how are you sure about it show it to me I mean how do you know that it exists you just know because if you jump off the window instead of taking the stairs bad things will happen right and so this is why faith is is, is that is that you are you are sure that you call those things that are not as though as they are because you know who you're serving you know whose eye you're under you know who stands on your side and therefore you have the boldness and audacity to call those things that are not as though as they are and God honors that kind of attitude God honors that kind of faith and he comes through and brings those things that are not into physical reality that's what faith is so our faith is not in faith but our faith is in God because he's the one that provides things he's the one that makes things happen he's the one that does the miracle um, the other part that I want you to pay attention is of this this first starts this so then faith comes and a lot of times you just read it and skip it but I want you to to uh, to see that faith first of all faith is not constant faith fluctuates faith is not something that you achieve at one point or you have or you do not have it and this is all okay if you have faith then you have it if you don't you don't faith is not constant faith fluctuates let me let me give you an example it's like a gas tank it's like a gas in your tank you drive around and gas, gas gets lower you continue to drive around you're gonna run out of it and you're gonna stop so you need to constantly refill your tank so that you can move forward and achieve the things that you're looking to achieve that do the things that you want to do go to work run your chores and uh, do the rest of the things so faith is not constant it constantly fluctuates and faith can come and faith can go so I want us to remember that faith can come and faith can go you can have faith you can have great faith you can have little faith Jesus uh, spoke many uh, many times he's he said the centurion had a great faith woman that touched the woman that touched the garment of his clothes and got healed he said it's a woman of great faith we know that uh, when disciples were doubting Jesus and they were freaking out on the boat and they thought they were gonna die Jesus said oh you of little faith so they had little faith so we can see there's a different ranges of faith and Jesus there was uh, parts in the Bible where Jesus says that you have no faith at all so you can have faith in one instance you cannot in other times you cannot you might not have faith so and write it write it down the next thing faith does not come by accident faith is intentional so if you're sitting and thinking you know uh, uh that faith is some kind of a some kind of thing just one time one day that you know you're just gonna have something spontaneous come over you and you're gonna have this this magical great faith that's not what happens faith is not spontaneous is not an accident faith is intentional 
what I mean by that. We just read the word that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So Bible reveals us a principle, Bible reveals us a secret that faith is something that you work towards and that comes. Faith comes. God, God is a God of principles and everything that God does he, he, he works through some sort of a principle and all many of those principles how God works he shows us in the Bible and he and he tells us how to obtain certain things how to have certain things how to go about different things and in order to have faith this is what God says through Apostle Paul in, in, the, in writings of Romans he says that faith doesn't come by accident faith doesn't just happen faith is intentional and you must work towards it by listening but not just listening listening to the right stuff listening to the word of God so if we want to walk in our lives with God because Bible says that without faith we can't please God if we want to have a close relationship with God if we want to have consistency in our prayer in our relationship with God if we want to do the things that God has called us to do if we want to achieve the dreams and the goals and the purpose that God has placed in our hearts we must have faith in order to accomplish those things with guys with God otherwise we'll struggle through life on our own while God stands on our side watching us wanting to help us but the only venue, the only way He is able to help us is through faith. God doesn't do anything in our life without faith. Faith is a doorway. Faith is an invitation to God to come and intervene, to come and do what we want Him to do. Faith is like a passport. How many of you guys know, um, if those of you that traveled outside of U.S., traveled into different country, you have to have a visa. You have to have a passport and you have to have a visa. Visa from the other country uh, that's granting you an invitation, granting you an access to that country to get into the country. I travel quite a bit and I, that's, this process is very uh, familiar to me. And I'm pretty much almost ran out of the, you know, you have those little pages where they stamp all your, all your things in and out much almost ran out of it so the, the the concept is very familiar to me that when you go to a different country you have to have an invitation you have to have visa think about this God lives in a spiritual world he lives in the spirit world and we live in a physical world we, we're we're living in two different worlds even though they collide they live they they're inclusive but we are in different world and our faith is like a visa in our passport that allows God to come and begin to do things in our life. It's like that, that permission, that invitation letter that says, God, come and intervene in my sickness. Come and intervene in my finances. Come and intervene in my business. Come and intervene in my family. God, I believe and I know you will do what you said you will do in your word. And God comes and he sees that. He says, okay, now I have a right to come and do what he's asking him to do. Does it make, is, is it clear? We must hear the word of God. We must hear and hear the word of God. We must fill our mind with the word of God. When we fill our mind with the word of God, we will begin to think the thoughts of God. And to the extent that we think the thoughts of God, we will be able to walk in the power of God. What does that mean? To the extent we'll be able to think the thoughts of God, to that extent we'll be able to accomplish the things that God has called us to accomplish, the, th the things that God has put on our hearts. For example, if you're sick and you begin to feed yourself with the Word of God, that God is my healer, in His stripes I'm healed, you begin to replace the thoughts of doubt and the thoughts, the, the, th the, the other thoughts with the thoughts and the promises of God. You begin to think the way God thinks that in His stripes I am healed. Then when that word becomes a living part of you, becomes who you are, then that word gives you power to receive your healing. Amen? So, Hearing the Word of God creates the godly thoughts in our mind and godly thoughts allow us to walk in the power of God. Your life will elevate to the level of your thoughts. And there is no higher thought that you can think than the Word of God. 
there is a lot of positive speakers there's a lot of positive um movements where you can get positivity where you can get um and they'll, some of them are good some of them some are depending but uh there's a lot of things that you can go in the world and you can begin to think positive about yourself begin to think good about yourself and those will help you to a certain point yes it's true God has given us ability in our mind to when we when we think the right thoughts that we would think positive thoughts to to be able to accomplish certain things but there is higher thoughts that you can think these are the thoughts of God that are produced by hearing of God's word and those thoughts they can help us to elevate our life they can help us to live out what God has called us to live out the God and those thoughts can help us to overcome any challenges and anything that comes our way because the Goliath when he faced David Goliath was not confessing defeat right you guys know the story of David and Goliath he said that I will take your head and who you are Goliath wasn't thinking low of himself he wasn't beating himself down he was very very positive you could say this was a declaration of a victor of a strong warrior but here comes David on a scene and David thinks positive too almost cocky you would say prideful but the difference between Goliath and David both are thinking positive thoughts but David is thinking not just positive thoughts David is thinking God thoughts and those thoughts are the ones that allowed him and gave him a victory over a giant over a, a a warrior that would that surpassed David in every category but the thoughts of victory the thoughts of faith they are produced in us only by the hearing of God's word so I want us to make a commitment today in our lives in our personal life commit ourselves to the reading of God's word commit ourselves to listening to the right podcast to the right teachings so that the, so that it could produce in us godly thoughts produce in us godly character and which will allow us to walk in the power of God which will allow us to walk in the victory in our life in every situation good and bad times they come to good people and bad people Job, God himself called him a righteous man but yet he could not escape bad times in his life. But what allowed Job to triumph and overcome is that in his mind he had one truth that was unshakable by anything, any situation is that my Redeemer lives and he can redeem me from any situation even this one. He held on to that truth. He held on to those thoughts that were from God and sure enough God did not fail Job. He came through and rescued him and his life after was much better, much sweeter, much richer, much healthier, much more enjoyable than his life before. Amen. God never does anything without our faith. Can I also make the same statement is that God never does anything without your thoughts. Your thoughts, they open a way out for God. But not just any thoughts, the thoughts of God, they open a way to God. Amen. 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 In Joshua 1.8, uh, God says, meditate, meditate on this word day and night and you will find good success. God's word never has brought anybody down. God word, God's word, when it's genuinely received in our hearts, will produce godly thoughts which allow us to overcome in life every situation and triumph over everything amen so we're gonna work backwards a little bit now we're gonna go into the verse um, 14 and we're gonna go it says and how shall they hear without a preacher uh-huh so not only we need to have faith but we need to have a preacher we need to have somebody that speaks into our life it's so important to have right kind of mentors in your life it's so important to rate to have right kind of pastors in your life and leaders in your life it's so important to have right kind of teaching in your life because the kind of a teaching you have will determine the kind of life you eventually will have you know that there is not every preacher is the same 
not every preacher preaches the word of God even if he preaches from the word of God I know it's kind of weird but it's true it's true I remember one story um, I was very very young it was back in Russia when we were missionaries and I I, I, do, I scarcely remember the details but I'm just going to share the main point I remember this one lady and I, I I don't know how I heard about it I heard my parents overheard my parents talk about it or I heard somebody else talk about it but anyways there's this one lady there was two churches two or three churches Christian churches in our whole town not like here in the U.S. when we I think in Tri-Cities we have 150 you know church on every corner there was uh, we only had it was our church and a couple other very old old traditional churches and one particular woman from um from what I remember from the story from the other church uh she was attending that church and uh, they had of course a pastor and preacher and many of them actually and somehow something happened in her life I don't know if she just kind of messed up and did something in her life or I don't know what happened I don't know those details but the point is the preachers begin to tell her you condemn the Holy Spirit now since you can you you, you blaspheme the Holy Spirit there is no forgiveness here's the scripture that he you know any sin can be forgiven but the sin that blasphemies for Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven so they preached to her they convinced her that she blasphemed the Holy Spirit and she got so terrified she got so I mean imagine if there is no forgiveness for sin that means you're going to hell you can't you know so if that's the case I mean she became she, she became so mental that they had to take her into the psycho, uh, psycho clinic. I mean things, things, uh, things got so bad for her that I mean they had to restrain her because she just, I mean she was losing it. That's it. I mean imagine knowing that for eternity you're condemned because you blasphemed me the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so, so, so they taught her of that. And um, as far as I remember then I think my parents got involved, my dad got involved and, and they, they talked to her and they helped her out of the situation if, as as far as I remember the ending of the story was positive but the point is that not every preacher is the same not every teaching is the same every teaching has a spirit behind it and that's why we must we must uh first of all we must test every teaching according to the bible make sure it's the whole counsel of God number one thing and number two we must we must see the fruits of the spirit the results in that minister's life or that preacher's life what God is God supporting their position is God supporting what they're preaching what they're teaching or it's just mere words and there is no power behind it it's just a theory but there is nothing no God's there's no approval of God there is no support of God in their life it's so important to see what we listen and who we follow I met um a couple a couple months ago uh, I ran into this old friend of mine he's from a different church let's just say and um, in that church they always um, they always preach about last days type of a thing no, not always but a lot of times and it's it's not in a positive light and it's like look how the world you know how the world is uh sinful you know this world is gonna burn and and this and that I mean look uh, look uh, America is so perverted and I mean like they come up with and then on top of they get all the negative news all around the world and Obama is this and they you know that everybody everybody is bad everything is bad and they back it up even from the scripture and I was talking with him I mean he, well he was talking to me uh, for maybe like 10 minutes telling me how this persecution is gonna come and that persecution is gonna come and that's all he's talking about this persecution and that persecution and we all gonna die and God's gonna punish us and we are all un unworthy and you know honestly I mean you can go depressed in those 10 minutes if you really believe what he's saying and I'm sure some of you have came across those uh, things and he has scriptures to back it up and everything and and his life has nothing to show for it I'm just living in anxiety and then living in this constant fear that's not what God has intended for us you know I saw I started talking to him I was like true I mean what you said is facts are true but I was but I told him I was like but God said that in the last days he's not proud of his spirit the church is going to be greater than greater than ever in any other time in the Bible if you look at the if you look in um in Acts you know you see all these great things church was doing God said that in the last days church is going to be even greater 
you know God said that he saves the best for last and I beginning to you know share some scripture with him and I said that God said that that uh, when sin abounds grace will abound even more and so I begin to begin to talk to him and begin to tell him both of us were quoting scripture but not both of us not both of us were not right one had to be right one had to be wrong right so my point is is that when we make sure in our lives that we follow men and women of faith and I tell you one thing about faith faith is faith is confident hope and I don't know any faith that is negative I don't know any faith that is pessimistic I mean how can you be hopeful and pessimistic at the same time and Bible says if without faith is not possible to please God so that means you're walking around and you're facing you know you're short this month but you're walking around with your shoulders squared up head held high you say you know God is my provider he's gonna help me not quoting last days you know this is gonna happen and they're gonna you know they're gonna persecute us everywhere and things like that that's how's that faith so we must choose our teaching carefully we must choose who we let who we hear in our lives in our church we always encourage and we 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 always say you know make sure you listen to podcasts Re, uh, read the word of God read men and women uh, read the books of men and women of God that God is using mightily follow the people in your life that um, follow those people that will take you to a place where God has called you God has an individual plan for you. God has a purpose. God has anointing specifically for you to, uh, to accomplish what God has called you to be. Some will be professional, uh, professional uh, athletes. Some will be big businessmen. Some will be in politics. Some will be evangelists and pastors. Some will be stay-at-home mom raising kids. Whatever it is. But God has anointed you for that specific purpose. And God, and this is the people that we encourage you to listen. This is the people that will infuse faith in you. So that you can live out, uh, live out your purpose and your calling. What God has for you. We must select our mentors and those people that speak into us very carefully. We must observe what they teach. And we must observe the fruit of their action. If you... If you want to be great successful businessmen but you surround yourself with people that have no emotional control how they spend their money they have no emotional intelligence they have no intelligence at all let's just say that not any intelligence and this is who you're hanging out with and you have dreams to be successful and be rich you will not become that person because anything you're going to try to do, anything you would want to do, they're constantly going to be right by your side speaking into your life. You're going to be hearing, but you're going to be hearing not faith. You're going to be hearing doubt. Oh, you think you can do this? Or oh, who do you think you are? You're one of those from our family that, you know, that wants to make it. Huh? It's always been like this. It's always going to be like this. Who, who well, you know, why are you so prideful? Well, who, you, who, who are you making yourself to be? With those kind of people in life, you're not going to make it. That's why you need to surround yourself with people. They can speak life into you. They can show you a way to get to the place they got. Amen. And sometimes it's not possible through personal uh, interaction. A lot of times it will happen through podcasts, books, and videotapes and things of that sort. Uh, you, hear, you heard just, just a few minutes ago, you heard um, the testimonies of, of two people. And we have, we actually we have a lot more, um, a lot more, a lot more people that got healed last Wednesday. Why do you think it's beginning to happen in our church? Why do you think we're beginning to see salvation happen in our church? Why do you think we're beginning to see healings happen in our church? And time is coming where we will pray for people and they will get delivered without the anointing water. When we're gonna, when we're gonna come up in those mass prayers that we pray on Sundays and 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 tonight, when we're gonna begin to come against every evil spirit in people's life, people will be delivered. Every curses of life uh, in people's lives will be broken. Why do you think that happens and will happen even more in the future? Is because our church, we surrounded ourselves with the ministries that happens in their uh, that happens in their ministries. One thing about a pastor, and you have to know that a pastor. Um, from very beginning when we came when we uh, from from beginning of his life uh, from beginning of his ministry he was always on the lookout where God is moving 
even I remember as, as young as I, we, when we were missionaries in, in, in Russia, you know, he would have tapes and he'd listen to tapes, watch people where there's revival going on, when people getting saved, listen to them um, and imitate them, follow them, follow their teaching, renew their mind, forget all the old thinking and take on the new thinking. And he would always push himself. I remember when we came to uh, United States, there was this pastor in, in Ukraine, Sunday at the lodge, and he was like, you guys have to listen to him. And so listen to his tapes, listen to everything he does, follow him, you know, do what he does. And, and we were. We started, we started doing it. We started listening to him. We started doing it. And in 2005, God just opened a way and, 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 and salvation beginning to happen. And be, uh, salvation beginning to happen in our church. People started getting saved one after another, after another, after another. Why? Because we were following a man that had the fastest growing church in Europe at that time people were just getting saved by hundreds in his ministry I mean God really called them to uh call them to to soul winning and we were following intently never missed the message that he would speak and um and so at that time we were too young to travel by ourselves but we followed him through in that in that sense and pastor always encouraged us and then something happened that man in in Kiev Sunday larger things kind of went south there in his church uh and he kind of disappeared off the radar and then for some time we just really didn't have anybody really to follow here and there people we kind of like looked around but pastor was always on a lookout and what happened in that period when we had nobody to follow something started happening we stopped having salvations not only we stopped having salvation people started leaving the church vision was lost focus was lost because we had nothing to look at we had no mentors we had no image to pursue to go after Shortly after, uh, we begin to start following uh, the ministry of Prophet T.B. Joshua. Pastor was like, you guys have to watch it. He made all of our leadership team watch it. Everybody, every service needs to be watched. Every testimony needs to be watched. He's like, you have to watch it, watch it. It was almost so annoying. I was like, man, really? I mean, okay, I would watch it if his services were like two hours or three hours like Americans. But his service is like 12 hours, dude. It takes me four days. It takes me four days to go through his service and to listen to everything. And, and, and almost, you know, I'll confess my sin I almost was like rebellious on insight you know kind of like oh why do we have to listen to another guy follow another guy but pastor keep being persistent he being persistent you guys have to listen listen and then we start listening we started following that ministry we start going there um, every 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 three or four months we start following that ministry and sure enough shortly after we begin to see healings and deliverances in our ministry and pastor was continuing to pursue him, continuing to pursue him. He, he, he knew that something was missing. People were not getting saved. And then he came across the ministry of Pastor Vladimir Montan in Kiev. And he saw how people are literally getting saved by hundreds. People getting healed and getting delivered. First thing he said, guys, church is buying you tickets and you go in there. Go and learn from them. Go and sit there. Go and ask them to pray for you. Follow those men. Follow this man of God and have him pray for you. Have, them, have, uh, have him tell you what you need to do. Sure enough, after a couple trips, after listening to, to the messages and the word, listening to the teaching that God showing to this person, uh, to that pastor, five, six, seven months later, we begin to see salvation happening. And now we've been happen it's been happening every single, almost every single Wednesday. People are getting saved here. Two, three, four people. And people will get saved tonight. Amen? Amen. This is to show you the power of who you follow. The power of the preacher. He said, how can they believe if they don't have a preacher? You must have people in your life that you follow. It might be a leader. It might be a home group leader. It might be your pastor leaders here. It might be other people in your life. But whatever, whatever, uh, whatever, whatever area, it can be spiritual. It can be financial. It can be marital. You know how many couples get divorced? Statistics says that. Most of the couples that get divorced, divorced, one common thing they have is because they have people around them that are single. That's one of the biggest things. Why? Because that's all, they, that's all they hear. That's all they hear. Instead of being surrounded with people that are godly couples, that, uh, couples that stay together, couples that know how to work through them. And they, they get divorced instead of working things out when, when, when hard times come. So it's so important to make sure that we follow the right people we have the right people around us this is why we have home groups this is why we have mentors this is why so that we don't stay in one place but we move forward amen 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 and i'm gonna finish with this time has gone by so quick and i'm gonna finish with this turn with me to roman 1 13. romans 1 1 13.
Okay. 14. 13, 14. 14. I am a debtor both to Greek and to barbarians, both to wise and unwise. So as much as I'm in, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you who you are in Rome also. So Apostle Paul here says that I am in debt to preach the gospel. We, I was just talking about importance that we have somebody that preaches to us and reaches the right doctrines. But I want to also tell you, like Apostle says, that I am in debt to preach myself. And you know, as our church, in our church, we strongly believe that every person is called to evangelize. Every person is called to share the gospel. Apostle Paul says that I am in debt to do it. This is how he sighed. This is why Paul was so relentless. He dedicated all of his life to preaching of the gospel. I want to tell you one thing is that God has done everything on his end in order to save this world. God has sent his son to die for us so all our sins can be forgiven so we can be forgiven and he sent his Holy Spirit to empower us to preach the gospel, to empower us to live out our life. God already done everything that he could do on his end. All we need to do is obey and go and do it. Paul says that I'm in debt I see this as an obligation. When God saved me, I see this as an obligation to share the gospel. I see this as an obligation to my fellow humans, to the society, to share the gospel of, of the good news. Because how can they believe, we just read in Romans 10, how can anyone believe without a preacher if they don't hear the word of God? How can your family believe and get saved without you bringing the good news, without you inviting them? Paul says that I am in debt to do such a thing. Paul also in other, in, uh, when he writes to Timothy, he says, Paul, the things that I've told you, you find other people, tell them, teach them, make sure that those are, that those people that you teach are capable of teaching others and those that are, they will teach, that will teach the others. Gospel was never meant for us and us alone. Gospel was always meant to be shared. We are responsible to share the gospel. We are responsible to be those preachers. Just like somebody shared the gospel with you and you're here today. You are responsible to do the very same thing. We are in debt to God for our salvation and to the people to bring, to bring the gospel. Paul did not see this as an option. Paul did not see this as a if I want to but Saul says Paul says I'm in debt you know when you get debt when you go and borrow something you are obligated to pay it back this is what Paul says that I am in debt I'm obligated to pay back what God has given me meaning I am obligated to go share the gospel with somebody the only way we read the verse 13 that everybody who will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they be saved unless they hear? And God is sending you and sending me out to our families, to our schools. He's sending us to our co-workers. He's sending us to anybody we come across that we share the gospel of the good news. Amen church? Amen. Come on say, I am in debt. I am in debt. Say, I am in debt, I am in debt. To, share to share the gospel of Christ. Of Christ. To my family in my school, in my neighbor, in the name of Jesus. God, when Jesus left this earth to his disciple, he didn't give no options. He said, go and make disciples of all nations. Go preach the gospel and make disciples of all nations. And God says, even if four corners of the earth will come to me, I will take him. God, God literally, God did everything, died for everybody forgave them, sent the Holy Spirit and said, if everybody will come, I will take him back. I want to tell you that as many people, as we share the gospel, that's as many people will be saved. It lays, it, it's our responsibility. If you share it with your neighbor, he'll hear it. There's a chance that he'll believe and he gets saved. But if you don't share it, how can he get saved? So I want to encourage us church. I want to encourage our home groups. Our home groups are not just for entertainment and only fellowship. Our home groups is to reach out those that are lost. 